R is a really complicated comic. I get approached by people at comic conventions as I'm selling my stuff, and they'll, uh, you know, of course, ask for a really quick elevator pitch of my stuff. And I look down at R, and I know all the things that happen in that book, and I look back up at them, and I just can't tell them anything. So, in advance, this comic is basically elevator pitch proof. But of course, you can't sell a book on a premise like that, so I'm going to briefly try and describe this comic to you as best I can in a very short video. So the first thing, and usually the only thing I tell people about R, is it's a story about time travel. For the most part, we follow this character, Raven Raspberry. He was a normal high school senior with odd friends and girl problems, until he suddenly gets swept up by this guy named Ventus. That ordinary life that Raven thought he had immediately gets flipped upside down as soon as Ventus shows up. He shows up at a point where so many things have just gone wrong in Raven's life, and things are basically at an extremely bleak end. Except, Ventus gives him the option to fix those things, out of nowhere, and Raven reluctantly agrees, because he's kind of out of options at that point. And the only reason that Ventus has that ability to stop all of those horrible things from happening is because Ventus has the ability to time travel. Not only can Ventus do this with his unique watch of his, but he also gives Raven a unique glove that allows him to manipulate the flow of space. It takes Raven a long time to figure out how to use this glove, but eventually it becomes a key element in the series and how he can contribute to everything that they need to do throughout time. And that's where this first issue picks up. Basically, it's uh, their first encounter together, we get a taste of Raven's life, we get a taste of what's going on with Ventus, and then once the two start exploring this new world of what happens when you start messing with time to fix things. But it's certainly not just that, and as we'll find out in later issues especially, there's a lot of other things going on here that Ventus is not telling Raven about. Like, what really caused those events that started ruining Raven's life? And how did Raven get in this situation in the first place? And there's some really big things he probably should have told Raven, considering how Raven's life as he knows it isn't even real. Raven's original life was rewritten from history, and the life that he knows that he's been living this whole time is actually just a fake rendition of what he used to be. Another one of the big things that Ventus doesn't tell Raven about that he really needs to really quickly, and Raven starts figuring this out early issue two, is that he's being hunted down by something. Now the reason he's being hunted down and the reason his, his whole life was rewritten, all those things are kind of mishmashing together the farther you go in the series and the more you learn about Raven's original life. But just to give you a, a taste of what that really is, considering how uh, this main enemy is really the whole um, antagonistic side of the entire series, starting from issue two, really. It's a whole race of alien creatures called the Gauze. Now, for more reasons I'm not going to tell you, the Gauze seem to have a whole army of humans, for some reason, fighting the rest of the humans on Earth. But they're not just ordinary humans. These humans seem to have really odd supernatural-like abilities, uh, some of them can seemingly live forever. Some of them can take uh, an incredible amount of damage and still just keep walking. Uh, some of them can fly, you know, things like that. So there's something really odd going on on this spaceship that the gods are controlling. And these are the people that are basically going after Raven and Ventus. And they are really the whole driving force of the series, trying to figure out what's going on with them, why are they hunting them down, and really, the whole thing driving this series is the fact that it's just supposed to be a lot of fun. The whole thing twists and turns and basically becomes a huge sci-fi adventure through time. I'm doing my best to keep this comic all ages. Now, I say doing my best because there's some villains that are going to show up uh, much later who are really hard to keep all ages because they're a little on the crazy side and their powers can get a little screwed up. So, I'm doing my best on that front, but I would definitely say that anybody can read this book. I'm trying to make sure that it's that fun comic that anybody can enjoy. I really love making it. I hope that you enjoy reading it, and I really want to know what you think. So anyway, as I said before, the book physically was uh, primarily made by me. The only other person who is on this book is Kim Wallen, who does the colors for issue one. She's doing the art for issue two, which means that I did not do pencils or layouts or anything for her. Um, as far as issue three on goes, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a mix of those things. I'm probably going to do layouts while she does her art on top of those things on the computer. 
but basically I'm doing the writing, the story, the letters, and sending it to the printer and doing all that stuff. Kim is there primarily just to fill in some art sometimes, so um, Kim's art looks really great in here. Uh, her colors are really awesome. She's getting much better at what she does as she paints so much, so you should definitely uh, keep reading the series and keep seeing how uh, both of us really are improving quite a lot as we do this. So there's several places you can pick up this comic, uh, either online or you can meet me at conventions, and to get more information on stuff like that, you can check the Hamster Bomb update videos that I'm going to be posting on this same channel. So be sure to check down in the description of this video, I'm going to post a link to Comixology where you can read our issue 1 online. I'm also going to post a link to my website which is hamsterbomb.com. I self-publish my comics and the self-publishing title I have is Hamster Bomb Studios. I have a several other comics I'm working on, I'm going to show you other videos for synopsises as well so you can get an idea what those are. But also on that main website, you can see in the shop tab, there's a bunch of things you can purchase through there, and especially you can order the comics physically online. So if you get a hold of a copy of our issue 1, be sure to let me know down in the comments or send me a message, I'd love to hear about it. Um, you can let me know on the main website, that's another great place I'd like to hear about what you guys think about the comic. And um, be sure to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys later.